Imagine this, you're driving a Ferrari, the engine roars as you glide down a scenic mountain road. I know, most of us can't afford a Ferrari, but let's just make believe. Now, imagine your Ferrari has wings. The Marchetti SF260 is widely considered the aerial equivalent to the Ferrari. It's fast, it turns perfect corners, and produces feelings of extreme joy when flown. And it looks just as stunning. Both fighter pilots and air show pilots totally obsess over it. And even Tom Cruise owned it. I feel the need, the need for speed. Which got wrecked, but we'll talk about that later. So, how did this slick Italian airplane manage to mesmerize so many pilots? And why does everyone compare it to the Ferrari? We know that Enzo Ferrari was known as the founding father of the Ferrari sports car. It turns out that the aviation world had its own version of Enzo Ferrari. And his name was Stelio Frati. Frati was kind of a freelance airplane designer and worked for different companies all over the years. This guy had a real knack for creating magnificent aircraft. It's almost like he was incapable of designing an ugly airplane. In 1955, Stelio Frati created a machine unlike anything the world has ever seen. In those days, most airplane companies were focused on low cost and mass production, but not Stelio Frati. His Falco F8 was a challenge to the status quo. The Falco was like an expensive designer cabinet, all made of wood and completely built by hand. This compact design was made for folks who wanted to zip around on minimal power all while flying the sexiest airplane of the 1950s. The Falco blew everyone's minds and it delivered on exactly what it promised. With only 160 horsepower, it could cruise at a mind-blowing 200 miles per hour. The Falco is essentially the first sports plane of the skies. Sounds like the perfect airplane, right? Well, not quite. So, there was a bit of a catch with the Falco. You had to build it yourself. You see, back in the 50s, you couldn't just go out and buy a ready-made kit. Nope. All you got were some blueprints, and you were on your own after that. People even joked that building a Falco was as easy as making one of those wooden balsa models if you had like 8,000 hours to spare. In the end though, about 90 of these planes had been completed. So Frati had to really come up with something new and quick. It was back to the drawing board for him. And to make matters worse, Italy was up against some tough competition from American aircraft brands that were becoming quite popular at Italian airports. One aircraft that really stood out was the Beechcraft Bonanza, which had exceptional performance and pilots couldn't get enough of. Italy had nothing that could measure up against the Bonanza. So was Frati faced with all this? Nope. With his expertise in sexy and efficient designs, he knew he was the man who could one-up the Americans. After teaming up with Avia Milano for production, he unveiled his next masterpiece, the SF-250. This design was loosely based on the Falco, but it had many improvements which would make it way more appealing to pilots everywhere, and way more simple to produce. For starters, power was swapped out for a 6-cylinder light combing packing 250 horsepower. Whereas the Falco required master carpentry skills, the SF-250 was entirely built in metal, which lowered production cost and build time. It had a huge glass canopy under which sat two in the front, plus a bench seat for one adult or two kids in the back. The razor thin wings were masterpieces in low drag design. They were flush riveted. In other words, they were smooth like butter. This equals less drag and higher performance. And get this, even though it's clear the SF-250 was directly inspired by the Falco, a lot of people claim that Frati borrowed heavily from the P-51 Mustang, and if you compare the wing profiles, you gotta agree they are somewhat similar. To give it some extra range, round fuel tanks were built into the wingtips, just like fighter jets from the 1950s. And once again, Frati knocked it out of the park. The SF-250 wasn't just fast and comfy, it looked absolutely stunning. But the real icing on the cake? It could perform unlimited aerobatics. Yup, this was truly a fighter plane for the masses. A plane that made you feel like a Top Gun, but didn't require a lifetime of flying experience. 
Ferrati then decided to give the engine a little boost, cranking up to 260 horsepower and renamed it the SF260. Stelio Ferrati then hit the road, determined to sell his sports plane to wealthy individuals. And just like that, he hit a brick wall. His plane was way more expensive than anything else in the market, so he couldn't find one buyer willing to whip out their checkbook for his sporty design. So was this the end of the road for poor Frati and his beautiful Italian airplane? Not so fast. SF260 was given a second chance and was saved by a well-established aircraft company, SIAI Marchetti. You see, whereas Frati wanted to market the plane as a rich man's toy, Marchetti saw something completely different in the design. I mean, just look at it. It looks like a miniature fighter plane, doesn't it? So why not sell it as a military training aircraft? Test pilots discovered it flew almost like a jet, making it a breeze for student pilots to step up to more advanced fighters. It was well built and rugged, meaning it could take the abuse of a newbie pilot day after day and still keep on flying. The long nose gear kept the prop away from rocks and debris, meaning it could fly out a dirt runway. And it totally rocked the fighter plane looks with his round canopy and fighter plane control sticks. In no time, they made some improvements to the SF260 and boom, it started selling like crazy all over the world. It soon found its way to more than 25 countries. It flew like a champ under the most demanding conditions from all corners of the planet. Marquet didn't stop there. The SF260 soon evolved into a ground attack plane. This bad boy had hard points under the wings that could carry up to 600 pounds, whether slinging machine gun pods or rocket. In the early 1980s, Marchetti cranked it up a notch and sold a turboprop version, this time with 350 horsepower under the hood. This model could perform 30% better in speed and climb while sacrificing a little range. Not bad for a plane to start out as a flying sports car. Before you knew it, civilian pilots were drooling over the SF260. This badass plane was quickly becoming a legend among students and instructors. But there was a cat. You couldn't buy them directly from Marchetti, so poor private pilots were left high and dry. Enter Alex Berger. In the 1970s, Berger bought out the Franklin Engine Company. Sadly, Berger couldn't find anyone interested in his engines, so he came up with a brilliant plan. How about we import aircraft from Italy and swap them out with Franklin's? Like a phoenix rising from the ashes, Berger rebranded the company as Waco. Yep, I'm talking about that same Waco known for their legendary biplanes from the 1930s. Rebranded as the Waco Meteor, a total of four SF-260s were imported as kits and then reassembled in the US. These planes marked the first time that regular folks could actually own a Ferrati design. Soon, the plane was hogging magazine covers and pilot reports many of them claiming the Meteor as the best aircraft money could buy. Sadly, Waco went bankrupt and the Meteors were no longer. Fast forward another 10 years and the SF-260 eventually found its way back into the US. This time around, air forces around the world were starting to retire the plane, so now you could own one as war surplus. Also during this time, several groups used the SF-260 for formation flying at air shows, and now, the general public had their first glimpse at the Italian wonder designed by Stelio Frati. As new owners got their hands on it, they couldn't help but compare it to the Ferrari, which not only helped spread its mystique, but certainly helped bump up the price. When the last ones rolled off the production line, the price tag was a cool $1 million. If you want to use SF260 today, you're looking at shelling out between $250,000 to $350,000. Kinda hard to justify, right? Well, that is until you get a chance to know the plane up close and personal. When it comes to handling, the word on the street is that it's the cream of the crop, with no bad habits or annoying quirks. A P-51 pilot even swore that flying this thing is as close as you'll ever get to a fighter plane, even if you've never stepped foot in one. Its precise ailerons let you roll at a nimble 90 degrees per second, and even when it's fully stalled, you still have full control of the airplane. Many compare it to the Beach T-34 Mentor, but those same pilots claim it can fly faster and performs with much better precision. Rolls, snap rolls, loops, hammerheads, they're all walking the park for this plane. 
but the SF-260 is not just a showpiece for aerobatics. The aircraft's performance envelope is wide. You can push it up to 200 miles per hour and get places quick. Or, if you need maximum range, you can dial it back to 165 miles per hour. While it might not be breaking any records for short takeoffs, it's perfectly at home on dirt strips. After takeoff, it will blast off at 1,700 feet per minute. Pretty wild, huh? In terms of creature comforts, it's got room for three adults. But many owners like to use that back seat for extra space, where you can haul up to 250 pounds of luggage with ease. When flown with a light foot on the gas, it will carry you about 900 miles on a full tank. With a higher wing loading than a Bonanza, pilots and passengers enjoy a silky smooth ride even in choppy air. When it comes to owners, it's easy to see why they love the plane. It's very well built and simple to maintain. All systems and components are within easy reach. And the Lycoming 0540 is considered by many the gold standard in reliability. That's definitely a claim a Ferrari can't make. Even though most SF260s are all about the acrobatics and stunts, many owners are perfectly happy using it as a sporty traveling machine. Take this owner over in Germany, for example. He zips all over Europe, averaging around 200 miles per hour in cruise. He claims that the plane is so rock solid that once he gets it trimmed out, he can fly it hands free. And get this, he doesn't even have an autopilot. Once the SF260 started becoming more readily available, it attracted both aerobatic pilots and celebrities. Debbie Gary boasts over 50 years of flying experience and didn't miss a beat before taking it to air shows. Having flown a wide range of planes in the air show circuit, picking the SF260 was a no-brainer. Here's a fun bit of movie trivia. Guess which plane was used to shoot down James Bond? In the 2008 007 flick Quantum of Solace, an SF260 turboprop tries to shoot down Bond's DC-3, but no one outguns James Bond, of course. So he outsmarts the enemy pilot and lives to see another day. And get this, the SF260 even hit primetime TV. On the BBC show Top Gear, it got to compete in a real life game of laser tag with cars. Their mission was to take down supercars as they zoomed around a racetrack, doing their best to evade the pilots. Those pilots confirmed several kills on that show. Lex is dead, Aston is dead, Go, my first dead. Ever heard of Tom Cruise? The guy who made F-14s famous in the original Top Gun movie? Well, it turns out he also had a serious crush on the SF-260. Yep, he briefly owned one back in the 90s. Sadly for him, his plane got wrecked during a ferry flight. Son of a bitch! Don't worry about Tom though, he eventually got over it, after he bought a P-51. A few aerobatics teams from around the world picked the SF-260 as their ride of choice. The Alpi Eagles were Italy's first civilian aerobatic team. Over in Belgium, they were flown as the Red Devils, which dazzled audiences all across Europe. In 46 years of production, Marchetti cranked out about 900 units, and of those, roughly 100 are still going strong. SF-260 has not just survived, but thrived creating a sort of a cult following among aviation fans and pilots alike. For those who've had the privilege to fly one, it's the best handling aircraft they've ever flown. As to those who own one, it's possibly the last aircraft they will ever own. And that's where the Ferrari and SF260 comparison come full circle. Both represent far more than just an aircraft or car. They embody a design ethos where form and function coexist in beautiful harmony. Where it's not just about getting from point A to point B, it's about the journey, the experience, the thrill. And that's what makes both these Italian machines truly bellissimo. Thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed that, and I highly suggest you check out my next video on this other amazing airplane.